So in the last video, we talked about the properties of depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, and there was only one type of, there is only one type of depolarizing neuromuscular blocker, and that is succinylcholine. In this video, we're going to talk about just the general properties and characteristics of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. Um, there are a few more drugs, a few more agents of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, and we'll go over those briefly in this video as well. So if you look on the right-hand side, the top right-hand side, we're still talking about this pillar or this point in the triangle of of anesthesia, of what encompasses anesthesia. So just as a reminder, anesthesia involves amnesia or decreased awareness, analgesia or pain control, and akinesia or uh, prevention of movement. So these, the, not, the neuromuscular blockers focus on this part of the triangle. So to quickly summarize here, uh, this is our nicotinic acetylcholine um, receptor here, and this is the neuromuscular junction, essentially. Uh, what you're going to have is acetylcholine, uh, which I'm going to draw in purple as a purple triangle. Acetylcholine ends up binding to the receptors here, uh, causing an influx of sodium, which in turn releases calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and further downstream effects causing contraction of a muscle. So what the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers do is, and we talked about it in, in the last video, or in the couple videos ago, is it is going to bind to the site where acetylcholine technically binds to, and it's going to exert its effects by inhibiting this whole downstream effect, it works by competitive inhibition or competitive antagonism. Compet spelled that wrong. Competitive competitive antagonism. So it prevents acetylcholine from binding to the receptor, which prevents a sodium influx preventing calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, preventing contraction, and causing relaxation, muscle relaxation. So that's how these non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents work, through competitive antagonism. They compete for the same binding site as the acetylcholine, um, as the acetylcholine molecules. There are two different classes of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, and we'll talk about both uh, briefly here. The first one, and this is a pretty, uh, pretty long name, but just bear with me. The first one is called the benzolysoquinoliniums. Benzo. Let me write it a little bit more clearly here. Benzo, lyso, quinoliniums. All right. The second, oops, the second type of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking class are the steroidal, steroidal agents. And I'm just going to draw this line here just to create a border because they're different types, two different classes, and thus have a couple different properties. So the benzyl lysoquinoliniums, it's a long name, but the way that you can tell which neuromuscular, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent is a benzyl lysoquinolinium is it is going to end in, and you've probably heard of this, it is going to end in curium. It is the curiums. For example, you have mivacurium, atricurium, and cisatricurium, which is just a chemically um, 
different variant of atricurium. So they all end in curium, you see right here. So that's how you can tell. These are benzyl isoquinoliniums. The steroidal non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agents, those are going to end in, and you've probably heard of this, these are going to end in oniums. So you've heard of these probably more commonly than the, than the ones above. So these are your rocuroniums, which is probably the most common one if you've heard of, if you've heard of a um, neuromuscular blocking agent, it was probably rocuronium. Vecuronium. And pancuronium. So I'll end in oniums. And you might be thinking, well, how do we know which ones to use when? There are six of these and there are a couple more. Um, but there's in over here, there are six of these. How do we know which ones we want? When do we use one versus the other? And we'll get to that in subsequent videos. However, just know that you choose your non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent based on uh, metabolism, based on medical comorbidities that the patient might have, based on how long you want the, the neuromuscular blocking agent or paralytic to last, um, and how fast you want it to take effect after you administer the medication. So there are a few different factors that govern which ones you, you want to use. So let's go back to our benzyl lysoquinoliniums or our curiums. So certain properties of, your cur of the curiums is that they cause this increase in histamine release. They release histamine. That's one of the properties of, of the benzyl lysoquinoliniums. And what happens is when histamine is released is it could cause a decrease in your blood pressure, so you could cause hypotension. And another big thing that uh, is related to histamine release, something that's significant in anesthesia, is called a bronchospasm. It could cause a bronchospasm. Histamine is released by mast cells, um, and you think of histamine release in the setting of an allergic reaction. And the histamine release causes vasodilation, which causes your blood pressure to go down. Histamine also causes constriction of your, the smooth muscle in your airways, which could cause tightening of those small, smaller airways, which could be, um, uh, could be an emergency. It, is an anest it could be an anesthetic emergency. So histamine release is associated with these benzyl lysoquinoliniums. Another other property of the benzyl isoquinoliniums here. I don't intend to make this video too long. Um, just a couple of more learning points here. Is that the metabolism is uh, carried out. The, the way that these benzyl isoquinoliniums, I should say, are degraded is not through any specific organs, but through... Uh, specific enzymes, enzymes in the blood. So we call those plasma esterases. And some of these uh, benzyl lysoquinoliniums are degraded by the uh, chemical, by just chemical breakdown at physiologic pH and, ph and physiologic temperature. So we call this just chemical breakdown, Hoffman. Hoffman degradation. Degradation. So the benzyl isoquinoliniums are degraded by plasma esterases and Hoffman degradation. So you could see how this could be useful in patients who have um, organ dysfunction because you don't need functioning, you don't need a functioning organ to break these types of medications down. You just have these specific enzymes in the blood. And these medications will just break down on their own at physiologic temperature and pH. Now let's quickly and finally talk about uh, certain properties of our steroidal non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers.
and we will talk about um, we will talk about the excretion, and the excretion is mostly carried out by the liver, especially with rocuronium and with vecuronium. So I'll type that, or I'll write that as rock and vec. So what happens is that these drugs or these medications are uh, taken by the liver, they're metabolized, and they are excreted through the biliary system. So I'll write here, biliary excretion. So the majority of rocuronium and vecuronium are excreted through the biliary system. Now, some of the rocuronium and vecuronium are excreted through the kidneys. So I should type urinary excretion. Rocuronium is less excreted by the kidney by the kidneys as vecuronium is. Um, so you can use rocuronium in patients who do have uh, end stage renal disease. It's more patients who have liver disease or liver dysfunction that the rocuronium may stay in the bloodstream may have a prolonged effect because they don't get excreted uh, as well in the setting of liver dysfunction. Pancuronium, which I'll write P-A-N-C, pancuronium is more so excreted through the urinary system than it is through the biliary system. So again, all of this stuff relates to how or what type of medication you're going to use based on your patients. In another video, we'll talk about what prolongs the blockade and how we can measure blockade um, how we can measure the effects of these paralytics or neuromuscular blocking agents that we use.